So today it's time for me to work on my game because I've come here to Stoke Park to have a golf lesson from the world famous golf coach, David Ledbetter. So, as you can see, I'm joined by world famous golf coach, David Ledbetter. David, thank you for joining David, me on my channel. This is a, an honor for me, because as we were just talking off camera, my first experience of golf was watching Nick Faldo in the Masters, and obviously you were very inspirational in, in helping Nick with his game. Um, and we're in one of your new golf academy simulators here at Stoke Park. This is uh, yeah, very it's, new. It's, it's great. I mean, uh, this is fairly typical of what we see in Korea. We're partners with a company called Golf Zone, which is the biggest simulator, simulator company in the world. In fact, they play more golf indoors oh, really? in Korea than they do outdoors. <laughs> and you know, they have professional tournaments, men's and women's, and it's a, it's a big thing. So, you know, indoor golf, especially this time of the year in the UK, is uh, not a bad thing, really. You know, you know, you've got perfect climatic conditions and uh, wonderful golf courses. And, and it's a great way to teach, too, which is uh, the big thing. I mean, I think the thing is you can actually learn a lot more, in, in my opinion, actually working on your game indoors than you can outdoors. Absolutely. And I was just talking to the head coach here, Chris, and he was showing me that this actually software here, you can actually move the mat and you can tilt it. Yes. So not only can you play a golf course, but you can create different lies. Different and it's, lies, yeah. We're really seeing just that next level of golf simulator where you can now get the data, see the shot, but also create different scenarios, which is, which is great. And especially, I say, in the UK this time of year. Yeah. It, no, well, I, th I think it's, it's great for bringing people on. Um, it's funny, people get a little intimidated when they're outside, even on a, on a driving range. Uh, but when they're indoors, for some reason, they feel more comfortable. Mm. So it's a great way to learn and it's a great way to keep your game in good shape during the winter for when the spring comes around. Absolutely. Now, most of my content on YouTube is to help these people play better golf, but this mm -hmm. time we're going to get roles reversed. You're going to give me a little bit of golf lesson to help me with my game. I probably don't play and practice as much as I would like, mm. but as everyone, I'm always looking to improve yeah, and yeah. play well, better. We're, I want all, to do we're play. all the same, right? It's, uh, it's one of those games where it doesn't matter what level you're at. I remember, you know, not many years ago, Arnold Palmer was probably close to 80. He said, David, come on, you've got to give me a lesson. So there he's at 80, still trying to, <laughs> still trying to work on things. You know, so it's amazing. Absolutely. So shall I hit a couple of shots and yeah, we'll, we'll have, have a little look. look? Let's see what you got. So I've got an eight on here. Okay. Uh, all right, so we've got all the numbers on the screen, which is great. So absolutely. we've got our own launch monitor. And you were sort of... Uh, pre-warning me what okay what I was going to see right uh, obviously you've seen your swing over the years and uh, yeah I think the, th the interesting thing I think with all golfers really um, we all tend to have habits that uh, probably we've had since we've started playing for whatever reason you know I remember uh, you know a great friend of mine obviously was Nick Price who I've coached for many years and I remember we grew up together in Africa and uh, I remember Nick probably from the age of 12 and he's still got some of the same issues <laughs> now, you know, and he's now 60 odd uh, that he had then. So things don't all necessarily change. So you've just got to sort of understand your tendencies. And I think this is, this is a good lesson for all amateurs. That, you know, if you take instruction, you take lessons, it's really giving you a plan for what you need to work on. It's not, you know, the tips work, you know, specifically, you know, especially for horse races, but they don't necessarily always work for your <laughs> golf game. Okay. I mean, you can find a little thing here or there, but it's really just getting some fundamentals and knowing that, okay, these are my tendencies and this is what I've got to watch for. So if you go and practice, work on the things that you know are going to really get you back on track. Yeah, yeah. You know? that's, that's true. And I, I would say for a lot of people that I coach, I will kind of say, you know, you're going to have a few drills which, which help you with your tendencies. And I would kind of say, you don't use those drills when it goes wrong. You use those drills continually to make sure you just keep yourself right. kind of in check. Because if you don't do those drills, that's when you start to sort of slip into, I guess, people's... Well, you, know, you, you can relate this to sort of a, a stretching program. I mean, you know, if, if, if we're tight, okay, and then you, you get a couple of stretches which are really loosen you up. Well, it's not, it's not like you want to do them once a month, right? It's something you've got to do on a regular yeah. basis just to keep things moving. And in, in the case of a golf swing, it's to, it's to keep it on track yeah. because... It is very easy to get off track. If you're playing well, yes, you don't want to think about it too much, but just these, these drills are almost what, what I would term maintenance drills. Yeah. yeah. So let's hit one more there. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, well, we can see um, a tendency to sort of get the club inside, which you you know, and then the club gets a little across the line. Yeah. And then it gets a little this way. And uh, so, you know, we can see things visually. I mean, we can obviously we can see it on on the camera here. Um, but the interesting thing in this day and age, look, technology is playing a huge role in instruction. But still, the, the good coaching really requires the instinct of a coach, too, as you're fully aware of. It's it's you know, it's not all A plus B equals C. I mean, it, it, otherwise, why do they need a coach? I mean, yeah. it's like you could you know, plug it in and go into a shopping mall or something and say, all right, hey, yeah. this is your problem. These are the exercises. Go ahead and work on them. Yeah. And, you know, it's interesting. I mean, everybody's different. I mean, the way we think, the way we built, the way we swing. I mean, there's no DNA that's exactly the same in golf. I mean, I always tell people, look, if you can't see somebody's face from 200 yards off and you've played golf with them before, you know who it is. Yeah, just yeah. Through the way they walk, the way yeah. they swing. And so it's, a, it's, a, it's very interesting in that regard. So here, here's a, a couple of things I'd like to s see with you here, okay? Because I think you could certainly, if you got the club a little bit more on the line up top, that would really help. So yeah. it's interesting how in many cases, um, problems certainly with most amateurs, um, you can trace back to the address and maybe the first move of the backswing. So that's important because otherwise, you know, it sort of sets the chain, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a chain of events that goes on. So really you're recovering from what tends to happen sort of almost straight off the ball. So take your address there. So, right, so illustrate to me what you, what you, what you see on video. Okay, there we go. So there's a, yeah, it's not, not quite as bad as that, but it's, you know. <laughs> Sometimes it is. <laughs> okay, and then obviously then it gets this little lifty look up top there. Yeah. So more than anything, I, you know, I, I work on one thing for the most part. Everything's geared around that, and it's what I call synchronization, okay, where you synchronize the movement of the arms with the movement of the body. Because you can actually make a, even, any amateur, you can teach them in about probably five or 10 minutes to make a decent looking pivot mm. motion. You can get them to understand where the club goes, but trying to tie those two together, is not always easy. Mm. To me, if you can sync those two elements up from a good setup, then this game is repeatable. Yep. And that's what we're trying to do is create more repeaters. Absolutely. So if you take your address position there, here's a little drill that I would like to see you do because absolutely there's a movement with your hands and arms away. So what I'd like you to do, set up to put your right arm in front of you like so. And I want you to feel you're going to leave this here and you're going to move your core or your midsection to get this moving. So as you move it back, keep the right arm there. Good. There we go. Now we can see as you do this there, there is a little movement here, mm -hmm. okay, but there's not a huge turn. I think... Where a lot of people go wrong, you can relax a second, where a lot of people go wrong, Chris, is that they, and there are some myths, as we know, in the Absolutely. game. I mean, all the things, you know, I mean, obviously the two biggest myths, okay, well, keep your head down and keep your left arm straight. I mean, those, <laughs> those have been thrown around for years and the most useless bits of information ever been thought of. And, uh, but so the thing is, one, one of the myths, too, is turn. Okay, well, do we turn? Yes, we do turn. But the problem, people say, well, you've got to make a big turn. And so they turn. And maybe this was thrown at you at a younger age. And so you turn. So the problem is, it's very easy to turn. But the problem is, if the club is now winging behind you, you've probably turned too early. And now your arms sort of lift. And that's yeah. where, that's what I see, a little bit of a disassociation yeah, here yeah. between the way the club moves and the way your body moves. Now, just this little exercise, which is really great. So here, we now, as you move, you can see as you move your middle. Right, so there is movement. But yeah. the fact is... You've actually got minimal turn, if you will, at this point. Yeah. Now, now attach your right hand to the club. I'll move out of the way here. All right, so you can see the club's a little bit more in front of you. Yeah, very much so. Your hands are in and the club head is out, okay, which is, I like that look. So it's still going slightly inside the yeah. line, despite the fact that it feels like it's probably going outside to you. That's just the opposite of that. Yeah. All right, so here. Now from there, now complete your backswing. Now you can see, as you do that now, your arm swing is shorter. Mm -hmm. The club is actually, yeah, it feels slightly laid off. Yeah, it does okay, for me. all right. So, laid off means slightly pointing to the left, which is for a shorter swing is ideal. But what's really happened here is that you've shortened the distance that the club has traveled. Okay, yeah. so the movement of your hands and arms and the, the rotation of your body sort of happen in sync. Yeah. So, when this finishes, this finishes. Right now, 
this is finished and you've got this independent lift to the top, yeah. right? So let's do that again now. So put your arm there, now, right? So really, and you can feel as you, as you keep this here, it really encourages this to engage. Can you feel John, I was just about to say, I feel, naturally that feels like it's, it's working. It's, I've not intentionally done that, but that little exercise makes that, almost that's engaging to keep the stability yeah. in there. Exactly. And so the key, you know, I, I've, I've been a big fan of drills and exercises through the years, because to me, what you, if you're going to make a change in a swing, you, you've got to, first of all, give somebody a concept. But the biggest thing, you've got to try to communicate a feel. Yeah. Because when you're playing, you, it's not that everybody, every top player has no thought. They have a, they have a couple of feels. Uh, a couple of them really don't think of anything. Probably somebody like a Bubba Watson. I yeah. can't imagine what he thinks, but <laughs> if anything. <laughs> but, uh, you know, these players have a feel for what they're doing. And this, what this does, is it really gives you a sensation of, okay, here we go. You can see, do you feel, you feel that, yeah, you feel that really little do, engagement yeah. there? It's almost like you're doing a mini crunch. Yeah, it is. Now attach your right hand. Now as you wind up here, you can see it's almost as if your, your turn, if you want to call it that, or your mm -hmm. rotation is finishing the backswing rather yeah. than your arms and hands sort of running on. Yeah. Now as you start forward now, okay, the club, you can see the club is sort of on plane here. And now you just simply rotate your body through. Boom. So it's a very, you know, you've actually got, you've got the remnants of, of a pretty good looking swing, but the start, in my opinion, is where your yeah. issues lie. Yeah. So, uh, and would you hit balls that way? Would you kind of- Absolutely, and, yeah. What if, so we're just gonna do that right now. So put your right hand there, that move this here. You know, we sort of call this the eight o'clock position. If this yeah. was a clock face, that was six, seven, eight. Okay, yeah. there you go. All right, so now, all we're gonna do now, you're gonna complete the back swing and go. No, that was a completely different look at the top of the back swing there. Yeah. All predicated by getting a good start yeah. to your swing. So let's, let's do that again. Certainly. Yeah, that's the one. Get the ball. Yeah, that feels very different. <clears throat> very different. Well, it's simpler, and that's the thing. You want to try to create a more simple, efficient swing. So there we go. That's it. And you should feel, just close your eyes and just sort of sense that. You should feel a little pressure still on the front yep. of this left foot. Yeah. Okay, you should feel that. Yeah. Engagement there. Okay. Now, now attach your right hand. Okay. You can open your eyes now. Yeah. Okay. So you've got minimal rotation at this point right yeah. now. Let's complete your backswing and go. Yeah. Very. I mean, you've got no sort of lift and across the line look yeah. at all. And so, this this really allows you then to use the body because to me, I've always, I've not that I coined the phrase, but I use the phrase. The dog wags the tail. Ever, you know, I wrote a book back in 1989 called The Golf Swing. You know, I made a big picture of the dog. In fact, our dog <laughs> was our name Wag, you know, <laughs> our Labrador. So, but it's, so the fact is that I think a lot of people, when they grab the club, you know, the club only weighs a pound, mm. right? So, so much emphasis is placed on putting the club in certain positions, which, which is fine. I mean, you can remember, but these are positions we swing through or pass through. We don't stop there. No. And I mean, I know you're stopping here, but the fact is that you've got to make it a continuous motion. So if you can, if you can get off on the right track, this really, I mean, this, this, this drill would help you immensely. Yeah. So if you can find one or two drills that you could actually create uh, and I come up with, I don't know, I mean, really, I keep coming up with drills. That's the fascinating thing about this whole thing. So, so what I would do, like if you're, when you're just hanging around doing nothing, which I know not very often, right? So just take your dress there. I would simply do the same. I would put this hand behind here like this, mm -hmm. right? Okay, now, now feel, feel a little resistance as you go back. Go ahead. That's it. Resist. Oh, okay, there yeah. you go. Right. Yeah, so yeah. this gives you the same, same sensation, feeling. Yeah, right? Yeah, I feel it in the core, yeah. Yeah, right. Okay, so do that again. That's it. So you're resisting. Yeah. Right. It's like yeah, almost yeah. like you're pushing and pulling yeah, yeah. at the same time, right? Now yeah. from here as you wind up, good. Yeah. You really feel so yeah, yeah. you feel the difference there? Absolutely. All right. So now now you can really create that yeah. same sensation even without a club. Yeah, yeah. So you know, just standing around talking to your mates, you know, in the pub, you can just do that. You know, they're gonna think you're crazy. You're you're funny looks. If it helps my golf. <laughs> and generally golfers are if it works, if it helps their golf, they're prepared to do it, aren't they? No, exactly. I mean and you know, I mean, straight away you could see the difference. I oh, mean, absolutely. you know, yeah. and, and you can feel a difference. Yeah. And so, and that means you're on the way. And so, 
yes, it takes a bit of time obviously to get this thing natural and what you do then you just you know, make this move. But if you can relate to this, yeah. relate to the pressure here and on that front foot, you know, it's fascinating now. We're doing a lot of work with biomechanics attached to, to you know, we've got the Leadbetter Golf University going now and part of the syllabus, if you will, is uh, is understanding applied biomechanics. And we have one of the leading biomechanists, his name is JJ Reve, who uh, amazing, he works with a lot of tour players. He's associated with the European tour. And uh, I've worked with him for over 20 years now and understanding, you know, the, how the body actually works. And we're using force plates now, mm -hmm. so we can see where pressure is. And it's, it's really very, very interesting. It's almost like it's the internal workings yeah. of the swing rather than just looking at on 2D video and you just see, oh, well, the club's doing this, the club's doing that. Well, if you, you know, th this is sort of a biomechanical approach yeah. to what you, what you uh, yeah. in order to make a change. Mm -hmm. Because you're feeling the pressure, you're feeling the resistance. And so that yeah. in itself, if you work on that, it changes the mechanics yeah, yeah. rather than just yeah, thinking yeah. mechanics. Yeah, yeah. Because it's not always easy, as we know, going out in the golf course, thinking of this, that, exactly. and t'other. Yeah, exactly. So... Um, that, that should help you. So Excellent. you're on track. Maybe be up. Be I'm going to get. I'm going to get. I'm encouraged right? to go and practice now, which is always a good thing, isn't it? About golf lesson, you kind of inspire people to go and play, don't you? So. Well, that's it. And so, and I always say, you know, it's it's interesting. I mean, with golf, if you can get instruction, if you can get to the root cause of the problem early, uh, like this for you, I mean, you're away. Yeah. It's, the the thing is, if you dabble at this and dabble at that, I mean, it's okay. Come on, let's get the club a little bit more in position here. Let's stop it there. Well, that's like saying, you know what? You know, you're coughing. Stop coughing yeah. and you, you'll, you'll be better. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's fine. But Gotta okay, what's the... causing the yeah, cough yeah. here? Well, what's causing this? And yeah. so yes, everything's really, if you think about it, is cause and effect. So get, get to the root cause of it and you uh, create a better effect. Super. David, thank you very much. That's one thing off my bucket list, a lesson with David Ledbetter. Really appreciate your time. I know you're busy, uh, but this is a fantastic studio you've got here, so I hope, uh, I hope this opening goes well. Uh, once again, thank you for joining me on my channel. My pleasure. No my problem. Pleasure.